Alrighty, folks, and welcome back to Wisconsin High School Girls Volleyball. We are back in the Grove and just getting back from the scores the table and wrapping up her duties. Indeed, I am. Miss Angie Houston joins us again. Hello there. How are you? Doing good. Hey, uh, Mr. Simon's got the band going. Oh, Mr. He Cotton does. Guy over there. A little little different atmosphere than a couple about a month ago. Absolutely. A little more energy comes into play this time of year. Absolutely. Uh, definitely headed uh, last regular season match here for Powers Grove. Freedom might have, I believe they got one on the schedule for the 14th. That's going to be against Marinette. But this will wrap things up here for Howard's Grove as they prepare to head into postseason play. Uh, more than likely atop the Division One or not Division One, the Division Three standings. I say Division One because I look at their schedule, and that's about all they play. Absolutely, of, I think uh, Coach Damro does a great job of making sure he creates the schedule for what he needs it to be, and what he needs it to be is some great competition all year. Absolutely, I was reviewing it since the last time I was here. I mean, just incredible. I mean, they've uh, they have a loss to Oconomowoc. But not so fast, they've beat them two other times. Correct. They lost to the uh, parochial school DASHA out of the GMC, but not so fast. They also got them two other times in the regular season. Absolutely, and they're also <laughs> number the one of the number top teams in Division One yeah. this year. Yeah, and have Oconom held their ranking all year long. Exactly, Oconomowoc's been up there all year long, as, as well as uh, DSHA. A uh, couple of wins against Manitowoc Lincoln uh, and uh, they did lose to Appleton North, and Appleton North has also been up there all year in, in the top ten in Division One. Absolutely. So. And I think a common theme you see across many of these teams we're talking about is uh, players that play for their uh, fabulous club program, FC Elite, which is the connection you're seeing here tonight. Uh, Coach Damro was telling me a little bit in pregame, um, actually at the end of the JV game, that uh, Coach Damro actually coached uh, a couple of these players from Freedom. And he had an opportunity that uh, he actually threw Damro three training. Uh, actually worked with the entire Freedom Volleyball squad. Very nice. Uh, so the connection there, and one of the dads is actually going to be coaching for FC Elite, um, which is pretty exciting for them tonight. Yeah, that'll be. Uh, that's great. I mean, it's just such a great program. I've known a lot of three or four people that have coached in it over the years, and uh, also come up and played played in it. So now, you know, getting involved doing this on the volleyball side of things, it's. Uh, definitely the top program uh, in in the state. You know, following them there. <laughs> definitely, they you know they've got that hanging over their head. I'm confident there's been discussions and conversations with the team. Uh, but Coach Jamro not only you know does a great job instructing the game of volleyball. I think he also really takes into account the the mes mental toughness that this game uh, takes. Obviously, being a game of streaks and runs, and it can go all over the place pretty quick. You got to have your head in the right place to be successful. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we, uh, we're we waiting on some technology things and trying to get up to speed, but so we fortunately missed the senior night. We'll just kind of recap that. Uh, five seniors for this Howard's Grove squad. Absolutely. Um, Emma Byrol, she, uh, her sister introduced her and had some nice things about her. I love the... Uh, the story about the uh, laundry basket. Yes, how she trapped uh, her big sister in the laundry basket and a great picture and memory for them. Uh, you know, what a special moment. There's two sets of sisters here tonight. You know, the Kaminsky girls um, and then also the Byral girls and um, both of them talked about how their sisters were their best friends and I think that's what the game's all about is developing those relationships and how that's going to impact them throughout their lives and you could tell they were quite emotional and it, it has a uh, a lot of lot to do with the character of these young ladies and how they take care of each other and work together uh, each and every day. So it was a pretty cool experience to yeah, see. 100%. I mean, last time we were here, it was uh, youth night or buddy night, and we had all the youth in the in the stands and on the baseline and the night, senior night. So a couple great momentous nights here. Uh, in the Grove. Absolutely, so. and we shouldn't uh, forget to mention the nope. other seniors. Absolutely. You know, Lizzie Hockenhall, uh, Destiny Benton, uh, Micah Rathel, um, and then obviously, you know, we already talked about Emma Byrell and uh, Carissa Kaminsky. The impact that these young ladies have on a program um, over time is just tremendous. Um, being the middle school principal, you know, I see a few of my young ladies here on the end line watching, and um, they talk about it all the time and what it means to be a part of this program and the success that they have uh, been a part of. Uh, it's pretty remarkable. 
most certainly. Just gonna cycle through some of the uh, the picture boards that uh, friends and family and teammates put together for those seniors as we were hoping to bring it uh, bring it live to you tonight, but unfortunately a little technology and got in our way. Uh, so we had Emma and Destiny, Carissa. You know, we'll get to see them here coming up in a little bit. Just probably about uh, six, seven minutes away from starting lineup at National Anthems. We will bring that to you, everything you've known to come to love with W7. Well, so far so good on the live stream. Everything seems to be going good. I haven't gotten any updates that it's bad, so we'll, we'll give it a shot. Well, being that it's not bad is always good. Exactly. <laughs> You know, nobody ever tells you when things are going good. You always get the messages. Oh, that is very true. You know, it's, very it's true. not working. We can't see, uh, we can't hear you. Oh, yes. Which is always good to have. Absolutely, I, absolutely. But, uh, so yeah, just inside seven minutes here before we take National Anthem and starting lineups. We were in Freedom. I did a couple games with, uh, with Freedom to, uh, when they hosted FVL, back to this and now here tonight. Absolutely. Um, just running down, they're gonna come with three on the attack. Uh, Rachel Koss, Sydney Bartles, and, and Eva Wall. Uh, all over 100 plus kills on the year. Um, so, you know, Howard's Grove is gonna have to look to get the block up against those three. And of course, we know Coach, uh, Coach Demrow is gonna have them well scouted. Yeah, and you know, talking about Sydney and Rachel, those are two of the FC elite players that uh, Coach Damrell mentioned during the pregame. And uh, for Howard's Grove on the attack, I mean, it's a once again, it's a three kind of a three-headed attack there for Howard's Grove, being uh, Sage Damrell, uh, Carissa Kaminsky, and Mallory Gazuski. Uh, once again, all 100 plus kills on there. Kaminsky with uh, 329 kills coming into the match. And I'm guessing it's more than that because as of uh, printout, the stats weren't updated from uh, from this past weekend uh, when they went and took the conference uh, tournament crown, defeating Reedsville, Hillbilt, and Manit Manitowoc Lutheran in straight sets, 3-0, well, 3-0, 3-0, so. You talk about Kaminsky, you know, to me it's very ironic, you know, she's going to Dayton University next year to play, um, and she's going as a libero. Whereas she's one of the Howards's, you know, leading attackers, and surely hits the ball with a full head of steam. Last week I was watching a match, and there was two times she hit the ball, and just the girl didn't see it coming, hit her right in the face. So um, she surely has some power at that position. Certainly, and uh, last time we did Freedom, one of the big things for them was the uh, the serve receive. And when I'm looking through the stats for Howards Grove, I mean. Uh, Sage Jamrow, 66 aces on the year. Kaminsky, 42. Cameron Kaminsky, 35. I mean, coming in. Can they, I mean, that right there, that gets you, uh, when you're recycling through your rotations and going through the set, that right there gets you halfway to 25, what they're averaging on the year. Uh, they're, you know, those three, four kids right there are averaging right at about 12 and a half, 13 assists when you add it up. Uh, just, you know, incredible. Incredible stat for them. Absolutely, and with the serving power there, you put those top three as your first server servers in the lineup, and it's not too often you get much past that. No, most certainly, and uh, just about three and a half, four minutes away here, we'll be bringing national anthem starting lineups. We'll get out there on the floor, bring those to you. Uh, looking forward to that. We do have the microphone this time, not on coach but we have secured it into the volleyball pad on the, on the net, so we're able to pick up some of the communication back and forth between both squads, and just in case there's any of those questionable line calls with the officials. There you go. Yeah. That was an interesting perspective. <laughs> yes, exactly, and uh, I can attest these two will probably pick up a little tidbit sound bites from them. They are a uh, very boisterous crew, and uh, they Enjoy officiating. Seasoned veterans. Exactly. They they do enjoy it, and they do it with a big smile. Absolutely. So we always appreciate that. We'll take a quick break, and we'll come back with National Anthem and starting lineups. You're watching Girls High School Volleyball live from the Grove, only on W7.
here the band was nice in the pregame all set ready to go get things squared away let's get a scoreboard up and going for our folks at home freedom will be on the left in the road greens white numbers Powers Grove on your right On the first serve. Again, as we talked about in pregame, that control of that first serve with those first three power servers from Howard's Grove, difficult for Freedom to manage. Hey, Emma Byro getting things off in the right start for the Tigers. Again, going outside to Carissa Kaminsky. I'm just looking at a stat here. On the year, it says she's made 844 attempts at 40% uh, kill percentage, which is quite outstanding. Another nice surge serve there by Damro. So as we talked about, I mean, I think coming into the match on the serve, she's been averaging uh, three and a half, Three and a half for a match, and she's already. She's there already in the <laughs> opening set here. Again, Kaminsky from the outside, off the block, found the middle. I, I, I remember that from last time. She just kind of floats. She does. She has an incredible vertical leap. Yeah, I mean, there she's kind of just floating out of bounds towards the scores table, towards her cameras, and still with just authority puts hanging, it away. Hanging in the air. Again, Freedom having a little trouble controlling the serve. Nice tip there by Micah Rathel on the outside. I know Coach Damrose has the theory of he's serving hard on every play. You know, he serves for spots, but then it's with the most intensity you have on every serve. He's willing to give up a few of those misses uh, just by chances to get a few of those past him. Nice block. There by Benton and Rathel. And it's a quick 6-0 lead here in the Grove for the Tigers. The senior. Last. Oh, this is, uh, no, Damro. I thought Byro was on the yeah, serve. Yeah, no, this is Damro. Damro's leading uh, things off on the serve. Thank goodness Sage is coming back. Yeah, just the junior. <laughs> Not that it gets any easier, though. I mean, you know, she's coming back and headed off the mat. So, you know, you trade a kid to get going from Truman State. That's who we thought was on the service line for a kid that's committed to Madison. Absolutely. As a junior, as, she's only committed for like three or four as years. As an eighth grader yeah. and on the Olympic development training <laughs> team, right? One of the top 24 players in the country. And I believe the number one player in her age group in, in the state. Uh, if she's not, uh, I'd like to meet number number one, two, or three. Right. If I get to pick the team and I'm the team captain, I'm guessing that's one of my first picks. Yeah, so we'll go uh, into the Howard's Grove huddle there a little bit. Timeout from Freedom. Quick 7-0 lead. Student section is alive and well and in into this one early. I guess they like the uh, tunes that Coach Marinell up there uh, putting those out, they, they enjoy those. Get the uh, student section input on what jams you want to play, and you'll have their involvement, I'm guessing. Indeed. 
So back on the serve out of the timeout is Damrow. And a little dump over there by Freedom. On the outside by Rathel. Looked maybe a little deep, but the, she grabbed it. Again, Carissa scrambling, but still getting a nice outside hit. Nice cover there by Byro. Oh, yeah, Byro. Again, going down the line with Kaminsky. And looked a little deep there. Deep it is. So the long rally there out of the timeout goes in favor of Howard's Grove. Again, volleyball very much a game of runs. You get hot, you get hot. But tough for Freedom in the opening set to be at that deficit. Right down the line, that one finds the corner. You know, not only does Kaminsky have that vert vertical, but she's got that ability to just completely extend her body. She's not that tall, uh, but she's got that reach and just powerful. Yeah, you can see why Dayton would like her. So, service error there for Damrau. It will be the, old, the point, first point of the night there for the Irish. Looks and like serving uh, Lindy, Leah DeBrawl there for freedom. That's who I have as well. I even worked on some of my pron pronunciation tonight, so I'm get, hoping get. I don't slaughter those for <laughs> Hilbert. Freedom? Freedom. Oh, my goodness. See, then I said Hilbert. Ah, you can get the... Oh, goodness. You get the names right, but... Off to a slow start. <laughs> but the school is going to be a problem. It is, apparently. So DeBrawl. Off the block there from Michael Rathel for Howard to get the service back. Like the libero, uh, Kennedy will be serving. Coming just out of the left of our screen here. Nice serve there by Ellie. And 11-2. Again, Freedom struggling to get that first pass. Without a first pass, it's difficult to get an attack. Everything's just kind of coming out of out of system and you're left scrambling. Indeed. It's difficult for the setter when she's scrambling and running in circles to grab the ball. A nice serve by Ellie. A little tip there by the setter, number, number four, uh, Rachel Koss, again, one of the FC Elite players. Nice up by Kaminsky again going outside down the line. I think for Freedom, has got to consider getting their block up a lot earlier. Uh, Chris's approach is so quick to the ball. Um, the ball is past the blockers and they're just jumping. Yeah, well, we saw last time, they, uh, who was it that was in here, Xavier would get the block up and then she just float and tip she it over. over them, yes. you know? I mean, yeah. she's got her arm back ready to Jam it down and... Yep, <laughs> she reads the block so well. Such good court vision. 14-2. The libero Kennedy on the serve. And again, two servers and we're at 14 points. That one's going to be deep. 14-3, deep. so... Elena Christensen here, the libero for the Irish serving. Two out of the three points so far have come on service errors here for Howard's Grove. And a nice tip down the line there by Micah Rathel for her own side out for the service here. Coach Jamero appeared to like that placement of the ball, going for that back line down court. So Micah Rathel. One of the other seniors celebrated here tonight. There it was, Freedom got the block up early and just a little bit of a tip over. Nice block Eight. there by Emma Viral on the outside, the setter. It's not too often you have a setter with the talent that can turn up square, square to the net and also stand right alongside your hitters to get a nice block. And 
Micah serving for the Tigers. Little end around there oh, by Oh, she almost had it. She was in the right spot, just a little deep. Again, that was uh, Sydney Bartles with that nice hit there by the Irish. Again, one of the FC Elite players. You could tell that was a design plane coming on that end around. Nice attack. But again, it all starts with a pass. You gotta get a first good pass. Talk about court vision. As a setter, it sure is great in Emma Byrell to have the court vision that she does as well to get nice placements on those tips. Serving here, Karitza Kaminsky for the Tigers. Little, that one a little wide. A little wide there for Sage on the outside. So 17-6 now should be the score. I'm confident with Carissa Kaminsky in the back row. Now you'll see some back row attacks as well. There are Freedom able to get the block up there. On Damrau. Oh. Nice recovery there by the Tigers. What do they call that, a pancake dig, where you get that hand all the way extended? Yeah, it started with uh, Yancey getting up and just getting a little bit of a hand on the, on the kill attempt. You want to talk about sibling pairs. Uh, oh, yeah. Jackie's older sister, Sam, plays down in Truman. Um, and I believe when Jackie was a freshman, not sure if they played the high school ball together or not. Most likely not. I think they're five years apart rather than the four. Yeah, I remember uh, put, trying to put a scouting report together for, for Sam and the rest of her crew. I that can was imagine. A, that was another powerhouse crew there. Yes. Great kids. Another. They had a great four or five kids that came through that class in basketball. Well, even in volleyball, they were very good. I mean, they're just all around. So 19-5, and it's Yancey back on the serve. You want to get her with the lift there. Jackie back in one of her first matches, I believe she played this weekend for the conference tournament, but had hurt her knee uh, earlier on in the season and then was recovering for some time, didn't play, but it's nice to see her back in the lineup. And they come to the outside, that's the big arm of Leah DeBrawl. There's that outside approach there you see by Carissa Kaminsky. That one pretty much passed in the net, unable to scoop it out. 21-5 here in the early, down the early going of the match. Getting a little late here in this first set. A little wide on the approach there for the Irish. It's like coach subbing in here, Lizzie Hockenhall, which will bring lots of excitement and cheering to the student section here. I'm not sure if he got the sub in there before the timeout by the Irish or not, um, but I'm confident she'll come on out here as a senior that's seen limited playing time, um, but has definitely offered a lot to the team in, in forms of leadership and accountability and working hard. Uh, despite all of that, Lizzie's just one of these girls that wants to be a part of it all. Um, and those players are so impactful to keep everybody moving in the right direction on the bench and at practice, uh, stand up young lady. So she's gonna sub in here. That's fantastic. Looks like for uh, Sage Damro. Which is just great. I'm happy to see Lizzie out there. Good to see her in there as well. Yeah, let's see if we can, uh, see if we can try my camera work here a little bit. I'm not gonna be able to. Oh. Zoom nope. in on that, no. Nope. A little fan shot there. Yeah. <laughs> but she's right up there. So an ace there out of the timeout, 23-5. A freedom looking into this second set here as we go. It's gonna have to do a little different, something different on the serve receive. Calm down, be patient, wait for the ball to come to you. And it's coming hard. Uh, that can play a little bit of head games with you from time to time. 
It's no easy feat coming to Howard's Grove to pay, play one of the best teams in the state. But I tell you what, this uh, give you a good, uh, good dose of regional final and beyond. You better believe uh, it. This is what you know. This is what you're going to see. They hosted a really solid FVL team. They're going to be in there with uh, Luxembourg Casco. Luxembourg Casco, I think, is in their kind of their half. And it looked today how some of the meetings weren't completed quite yet, but depending on how that you know 12, 13 team regional gets split up, probably going to see a Luxembourg Casco or an FVL in that regional final or well, sectionals. Those, those seating meetings are critical because it's all about where you can get placed on the bracket. I know on our side of the sectional for Division Three, and there's game point there for Howard's Grove. Uh, their seating meeting is tomorrow night in the uh, Whitefish Bay sectional. Yeah, so... Well, unfortunately, it looks like our cell signal has given out, but we will keep doing what we're doing, and we will get it loaded up and all squared away, by the, hopefully by the time I get home. There you go. We'll see how fast it uploads on the way home. Transfer everything over to the iPad, it's always good to have a backup. Build a composite of it and then upload it off the off the hard drive. So, well, 25, <laughs> 25 to take seven. Our picture there. The opening sets. It is senior night here in the Grove. We will bounce back to the the overlays. Let you see those the five seniors here on the Howard's Grove Lady Tiger roster. Well, 25-7 if you're uh, Freedom. You know, you started out behind the eight ball there, just unable to capitalize and control on the serve receive. Damrau pretty much got the first six, seven, eight points, and it was pretty much over from there. Now Freedom, here in the second set, you'll start out on the, on the serve. Maybe you can jump out to, uh, you know, get a little four or five point lead and just build a little momentum. Absolutely. You, you, you just want to feel good coming out of coming out of this, this match here tonight, whether it's three sets, four sets, five sets, whatever it is. Uh, you want to feel good. You, you know, you're going to be headed home. I believe they're going to be headed home to uh, on Thursday. Yeah, you're going to be headed home on Thursday to face uh, Marinette. So... Maybe Another get this big division two or division, division one maybe? They are, they're probably one or two. Uh, they're they're two for everything else, so they might be one for volleyball. Okay. Um, just you know, there's a little less. There's only four divisions versus the five for basketball and softball and all the other stuff. But uh, yeah, so at least a very good solid division two, division one program. But feel good heading into that Marinette match. Probably going to be senior night for them. And uh, go ahead and. Roll, in, roll on into the playoffs. A little steam. Well, it's a good time of year to have that momentum on your backside, right? You want this time of the season to be a situation where you're playing your best volleyball. You've got your best game forward. Um, you've got your lineup squared away. You're all ready to go and um, ready to make a run deep into the tournament. Um, I think freedom here coming out in the second set, having the serve is an advantage for them. Obviously, it was a difficult for them in the first match to always be on the end of the receiving side. So maybe, like you said, they can get a little bit of a momentum here. It is a game of runs, um, but Freedom's going to need to get that on their side and jump out early. So we're just about all set here for the second set. Howard's Grove took the first one, 25-7. Coach Damrell comes down the line. Give the kids some, uh, probably instructions on some substitutes coming in here pretty soon. Absolutely. Nice for Coach to be in a position this time of year as well for morale, team spirit, to get everybody in and get a little playing time going into the tournament. Anything can happen, you never know. Um, so it's always good to have your whole lineup ready to go when you need them. And Howard's Grove is, they're definitely blessed with the situation where they can go pretty deep and still have an opportunity to uh, really capitalize against the other opponents. Well, that's the one thing I was looking at is 
you know, 11 kids have played 40 plus sets this year for Howard for Howard's Grove, uh, and they have statted out anyway uh, 87 um, coming into the coming in when the last time I uh, when I put in this off before before this weekend's nine uh, nine sets. Gotcha. So coming, you know, going basically going into Saturday's conference tournament, they played 87 sets. 11 kids have played pretty much basically call it half of them. Absolutely. For all intents and purposes. Um, and quite honestly, that, that half that's not on the court as much is probably could start almost anywhere else in the state and be a commanding presence on that team. They're just that good and deep. I would too. I mean, when, like you said, you know, I mean, you got three, two kids here, three kids that are in the starting lineup that are already committed to Division, Division one, one schools. Yeah. Absolutely. And nice that, hit there by uh, Mallory Gajewski on the outside. Looks like she's starting in the rotation where Carissa Kaminsky did last game. And Kaminsky's coming through the back row where she ended up last match. Last set, I should say, not match. Looked like a double hit there for Freedom. Again, struggling on that receive. So quickly, 2 nothing, kind of picking up where they left off. That one blocked. And a combination of Josie Larson and Mallory Gajewski. Gajewski. Yeah. Josie Larson saw a lot of playing time then when Sam, uh, not Sam, Jackie Yancey was injured there out of that middle. So it's nice seeing her get lots of experience and ready to go out of that middle, middle placement. Like you talked about, especially headed into basically the money time. This is what the entire season is for the next. You bet. Everybody's got to be ready. The next month. November 4th, 5th, and 6th, I believe it yeah. is the state tournament. I think the Division Three initial game is the semifinal is that Friday at 1130, and I think the championship's that Saturday at 1130. I know Coach Jamro doesn't like to talk about that stuff because I think he's a little <laughs> superstitious. Yeah, you don't talk about it until you're there. You don't. <laughs> Gotta put your money where your mouth is. Again, the Tigers out to a 5-0 start. Getting ahead pretty quick. I remember one of the kids, uh, Maddie Doki from uh, Michigan, when we'd always interview her, not always, but when we talked with her, throughout the season and going into their state run last year for softball. Was, well, we're just one game at a time. <laughs> one <laughs> we'll, at a time. We'll, we'll worry about that one. And when they finally brought it home, I said, well, can we finally talk about it yeah, now? Right, exactly, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> You're holding the trophy. Can I don't you, think Coach Jamro would tell you much different. It's one step at a time. <laughs> yep. Stay in the game. I think he actually preaches point by point. And nice little back set there. A oh, little confusion at the net there for the Tigers, but they recovered. A little push to the back line there by Carissa Car Kaminsky. Carissa comes in and says, I'm not done serving yet. I'll take care of this. Well, and she may have realized she was in front of the 10-foot line and can't jump, so stay on her feet and just push it deep. That one headed right for the line. You know, it strikes me about Carissa, no matter where she's on the court, it almost looks effortless, effortless. But you know she's putting everything into it. She's just extremely athletic. And by watching some of those serves and hits, I'm glad I'm sitting over here tonight, maybe <laughs> not on the Freedom Irish side. Some of those balls are coming pretty quick. So, different set, same result. Howard's Grove out to a 9 nothing lead, even though the Irish started with the serve. Indeed, again, just that consistent trouble on the serve received. I mean, I'm just throwing out there. If I'm Freedom, I might put all six kids just on that left, <laughs> the, the, the near side as we're, if you're watching at home, because <laughs> It's clear Chris, that's where she's shooting. It's going right there. Yes. I mean, I, it's almost like I would make, make, I will give you three quarters of the other court. I will give you that. that Let's see exactly. if you can hit it. 
And you know, but I bet you, knowing her, she's gonna hit it. It's not a dig at Carissa. I, no. You know, I, I guarantee you, she would hit it. She'd probably chuckle a little I, bit. She, I think she would get a good yeah. kick out of that. You're gonna give me that whole whole side of the yep. court. And I, I, my buddy, money's on her that she's gonna hit it. Just to play devil's advocate, I bet you she'd miss, and she'd probably laugh about it. That could be. You know, you know, she does. <laughs> like, are you like, are you kidding me? I missed. They gave me three quarters of the court, open. and I missed. Yes, indeed, indeed. <laughs> so, ten nothing here in the second set. Howard's Grove took the first one, 25-7, and it appears they are headed a little bit in that direction here as well in the second. So there's some lovely pictures of Carissa. A little ace serve there from Carissa. Again, I think this is the only the second rotation here for the Tigers. We talked about that early on in those first three rotations, really attacking the ball. Freedom bringing in a number nine. Uh, Leah DeBrawl has come through the back row here, maybe in help with a little serve receive. A little bit of a miss hit, but that kind of kind of works. Seems to be the theme of the night. Everything working out here for the Tigers. Josie Larson. She hit that and started laughing right away. Little touch there on the block. That one's gonna be in. Nice cross court hit 13 there. Thirteen, nothing. I think that's is it. Mallory Gajeski hitting on the outside on that one. Can't always see the line judges in my way. I think I should ask them to move. <laughs> I'm guessing that wouldn't go over very well. Well, I mean, what does it matter if he goes slides over to that side and the other one slides over there? For us, it's wide open, it's right? Over, right, exactly. So 14 nothing. Carissa still on the serve. Nice up there. Freedom looking at the block out of the middle, or I'm sorry, the tip out of the middle. And again, that outside back row attack there by Kaminsky. Looks like she almost hit the line judge. He's chuckling a little bit. I don't think he <laughs> wanted to get hit either. I just do whatever you want, Carissa. Don't worry about it. Coach is too busy talking to the other players. You do your, you, you, you do you. You do you, absolutely. <laughs> Again, a little struggle on the service. Hit out of the middle by number four, Rachel Koss. Nice recovery there by the Tigers, but I think the and four is too many. <laughs> you could hit it five times, we were all, we were right there. A little subbing for the Tigers. There we've got uh, Ellie Sheeler, um, as well as number 14, Abby Sohn. Again, exciting to see some of those, those gals uh, come off the bench. So Carissa comes out, probably got to get some ice on that shoulder there. <laughs> From all the rotation on her hits, right? <laughs> nice save there by Emma Byrell. Nice block there, recovery by Josie Larson. Little Nicely done there, that was number four. Rachel Koss goes with the little back tip there. Nice court vision there by Rachel. And I believe if I got my story right, it's Rachel's dad that's gonna start coaching at FC Elite uh, this next season. Obviously Rachel quite a player herself. Just the, just the junior, so she'll be back next year for the Irish. So the other half of the Byrals here checking into the lineup here. So younger sister Olivia. The sophomore. You know, you look at some of the depth of the program and the younger age of some of these uh, students, even though they're graduating five seniors, you'd hear that in other places and you'd think, oh my, five seniors. What are we going to do? Nice outside hit there by Mallory Gajeski. Some will call it a rebuild or a reload, and it's just a... Uh, it's a reload. <laughs> it's it's going to be a reload here for the Tigers. You bet. Nice pass. Nice attack there by number five, Kirsten Crewalt. 
Block got away there from Eden Marinell. Outside for the Tigers. You know, and the thing is, too, I, I said it about the most recent group of Tigers that graduated on the basketball side of things. A lot of people thought they weren't going to be that good, you, you know, from the outside. Yes. But I said, well, hold on. As freshmen and sophomores, as freshmen, those kids practice every day against the state champions. You better believe it. You know, it. the Sammy Ancies of the world and, and everybody else yes. in that group. Like, for an entire year, yeah, they may not be bringing back a lot of playing minute experience. Exactly. But the practice that they had. And that's the mentality you've got to create in the program, that it's it's not necessarily about the opportunities every day on the court that you can see. And it's difficult to understand when you're that player. You want to be on the court. But understanding that full vision and impact of a program and what it really takes. Um, and I think we said earlier even uh, many of these young ladies that are on the bench and, and being those role players, um, it, it's so important for them to understand it because they are better because of they are able to be a part of it. Absolutely. Nice hit there by Ellie Sheeler on the outside. Going to be four hits, four hits in there. the 19th point. It's like Ellie Sheeler's checking in. I before I was calling Megan Ellie cousins. Well, there you see. That's why. And I think we're playing at Hilbert, so you know. Yeah, you never know. Just a little confused here and there. I mean, it, at least. You know, the gym's blue like Hilbert. It is, well, maybe that's it. <laughs> I had a cousin who taught math over in Hilbert for years, so. 19-7. The Irish will be back on the serve, and it'll be number six. Number eight, maybe, for Maybe them? eight, yeah, Bartles. Bartles, yep. Now, Megan Sheeler is serving here for the Tigers. Get her right there, right in the center of the screen. The junior. Ball high up off the ceiling there for the Irish. Little tip over the net. It's a great reaction there by Yancey. Right. Self-preservation. Nice up by Ellie Sheeler. Looks like the Tigers kind of gave up on that play. A little bit of confusion of whether the ball was down or got her hand underneath it from right. the freedom. But you look out here, and this is uh, this is next year. This is right here. So great opportunity for these ladies here tonight. Very good. Yeah, let's see. Off the block there for the. For freedom, I'm confident Coach Damro is watching intently as this group of young ladies is on the court. Like Ellie Kennedy serving for the Tigers. Josie Larson checks back in for Eden Marinell. Well, and just as important, everybody on the bench is up and cheering. You know, the the, the starters per se. Yep. Well, and what a morale booster for the team when everybody can be a part of it. Sounds like perhaps a lift there by Freedom. We got Jocelyn Carmody here checking in for the Tigers. Uh, for Josie Larson, kind of an in and out there on Josie. Nice to see Jocelyn get some eye action as well. Oh, we even got a little action there. There we the go. Came I'm, over to I'm our in. table. I'm All in right. the game. Put me in, coach. I'm ready to play. Mackenzie Hennis checking in for freedom. I will. Uh, I'll will go serve. play the back row, and I'll just make sure. Well, I'm not playing the back row. Kaminsky's going to hit at us. Wow, well, I'm just going to monitor the back line. I'll just if it's just, in or out. There you go. More than likely, it's going to be in. Every team needs <laughs> one of those guys. Exactly. Hitting high over the block there for Abby Stone. Oh, uh, ball tripped up a little bit there for Ellie. So 22-10. 
Some more substitutions would be number 15. Samura Rutherford. Yep. So that's going to be just about everybody. I think so. Oh, it looks like I was just going to say it looked like somebody jumped on the net. It bounced pretty good there. So 22-11, so the Freedom build, building a little bit of momentum. Oh, that's one of those serves that when it hits the top of the net, sometimes it rolls over the other way and catches you off guard. Subbing back in for the Tigers, there we've got Emma Byron and Mallory Gajeski. I think Emma's got the serve. Again, uh, Emma Byron, 260 serves on the year, 94%. Looks like a 12% ace. And Off the block. Evil wall. Saw a lot of that uh, when we were at Freedom when they took on the Foxes. Just a freshman. She's going to be a good one. Just a freshman. My goodness, I did not realize that. Yes. <laughs> That's pretty remarkable. Student section helping out there. A couple of the fellas had to catch the young lady as she went in there. They seem a little surprised. <laughs> Keep her up. Yep. Make sure she doesn't hurt herself in the bleachers this time of year. Although I think they were on their phones watching the Brewer game, as I think was the element of the surprise there. Fellas. Not good. Which my understanding is it's 4-4, top of the eighth, so I'm keeping track of that a little bit myself. Oh, yeah, it's, it's okay. It's a big game for the Brew Crew. We got to win. It is. They got to. My World Series hopefuls are pretty much almost out of it, so Brewers gotcha. are the last. It's hoping for a Brewers, White Sox, World Series. Sox eliminated today, and the okay. Brewers. Could be on the golf course with them tomorrow as well. Uh, well, I hope, I hope not. not. I hope not. I hope but not. Uh, goodness, <laughs> goodness, we gotta have more faith than that. Oh yeah, it's one of those things, you know. Just so got Sage Damro checking in there for Samura Rutherford and Abby Stone serving at 24 here, so game point. Nice reach there by uh, number eight, Sydney Bartles, to bring the ball back in. Oh, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know about that call. Although it looked like the ball maybe blocked off, bounced off the block into the antenna, but it was hard to see the little ricochet there. I thought there. it went off the top of the net and not necessarily the, the block. Gotcha. So. And that's, it. And that's Sage. the end of it. Sage Damro puts yeah, it down. I will take care of things, says Sage. We will get this one, the 25-15, the final. We will take a quick break. We will come back for the third set. Can Freedom push this one to a fourth? Or Howard's Grove finish it off with a clean sweep? You're watching High School Girls Volleyball on W7. It's for the girls. Yes, Ed, there is a hot dog with relish in the Oak Creek dugout.
How can you not love that? That is just amazing. Well, hey, we're back. Just a reminder, coming up the rest of this week, we will close out the volleyball schedule with a battle for the conference championship. The seeds have already been set. Luxembourg got the one. FVL took the two. But they will battle it out for the conference championship Thursday, 7 o'clock, down at FEL. Luxembourg will come down. Currently the number two team in Division Two. At last look, FEL was number six. So that'll be a top, should be probably a top five matchup at this point. Um, and like I said, in their half, in their sectional, we got uh, Luxembourg took the one seed, FEL took the two seed. So two, those, two. Those matchups just came up? Yeah, they, I think they had the seeding meeting on uh, which I had on Sunday. Gotcha. A couple of them were on the today or yesterday and on Wednesday. So we've got that coming up. And then our girls basketball home opener, not home opener, it will be the season opener. Randolph M. Marshall will have uh, Badger, former Badger women's coach, uh, Coach Jonathan Tibbis will join Gary down at Marshall and Randolph. And I will be up at Wisconsin Rapids and Appleton East. And good buddy Chuck Thompson making his basketball voyage. He'll come over from Minnesota. He'll join me for that one. So that's our opener, November 16th. Yes, you got folks traveling all over the place. We do. We, uh, everybody, everybody knows the. we got the best seat in the house. The pay is not so good, but the rewards are plentiful. Sometimes that's what's more important. <laughs> exactly. So, Howard's Grove on the opening serve. And that's the first opening point they will drop here tonight. So, Freedom off to a much better start. Freedom going over the block. And that one just going to fall. Looks like Rachel Cost a little disappointed on that tip. I think she knew where the open spot was and came up a little short. Jack, Jackie Yancey serving for the Tigers. Nice ace serve. I mean, that ball has just got to be coming, dropping straight down from the ceiling when you're serving from up there. <laughs> I think that was a little self-defense. Uh, Come to the outside. Kaminsky. It's gonna be off the block. <laughs> Kaminsky right off the block of Koss. That's tough. How do you defend? Oof. Coach, what do you want me to do on that? All right, I got yeah. the block up. It's like you gotta be almost 6'4 to be on top of it. Or there's not a lot you can do. Nice job there by Byro. Quick approach there by Kaminsky. You know, most kids have to get back behind that 10-foot line to get a real full swing in, and uh, she can she can almost just jump in place and handle that. Speaking of Sam Yancey, that's uh, Sam here watching her little sister here on senior night. All right, they're awesome. Talking to her mom. <laughs> nice to see Sam. Must have a night off from playing herself. <laughs> Nice block there by Kirsten Crewald in the middle. Tigers didn't have very good coverage so. on that block. Lots of smiles and laughter out there for the Tigers. Indeed. When you can play with those smiles and laughter, it uh, makes it a heck of a lot easier. It sure does. So 4-3, 5-3 actually. Like Cameron Kaminsky checking in there. 
for Gajeski and Micah Rethel's checking in for Olivia Viral. Not Olivia Viral, Emra Viral. All these sisters. I think I think every match I've done this year, there's been sisters. Been on, sisters. on one side of the one side of the court. Allowed. Last week we had a, a pair on on both sides of the net. <laughs> Absolutely, it, it never fails. They always they're either six and nine or 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 six, it's six eight and nine is some combination of that. Easy to switch up in your brain with with long hair, so you, you can't tell by like the back of the jersey. Right. You know, so it's ponytail, never fails. long hair. Exactly. Five five now. Cameron Kaminsky getting a little setting time here. Confidence coach Damro wants to see a little bit about what she can do. Cameron a little bit has that happy-go-lucky attitude her sister does. So it's fun to see her play as well when you know they're enjoying every moment of the game. Probably not the one you want to see at the service line if you're the Irish. No. <laughs> Here we go again. Well, and I'm confident that Coach Jamro's not going to lose this one at 6-5. From his perspective, he's again probably trying to build that momentum. You know, the senior, Carissa Kaminsky. And quick hit there out of the middle by Josie Larson. Back set over to Micah Rathel. Good recovery on the block. Push to the back corner. Push. Saw that one. In the last set as well, 8-5. Again, phenomenal court vision. I would have to venture to guess these seniors have not lost a match at home. I would bet, if I'm a betting gal, that's the bet, the side I would take. I know they haven't lost one at home this year. Correct. <laughs> um, and I can't imagine they lost last year. I'm trying to think. Nope, the ball flew back behind there, but it looks like uh, Mr. Romy Got Goddard's going to take us. that one for us. See, now it's our fault if uh, Carissa doesn't get this one over or in. Put the bad juju on it. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I know another one of Coach Damro's uh, tactics is to control the speed and the pace of the game, of course. I was in that hurry up offense, wanting to get the serve off to keep that momentum rolling uh, in their favor. Not giving the time, the other team a lot of time to adjust. It's a good strategy. It served him well. A little back set there to Micah Rathel, tip over the block. Getting Cameron right there after it. <laughs> he celebrated that one before he put it away. Indeed. Nice hit. I believe that was Josie Larson out of the middle, correct? Is that uh, number 11? Yes. Yeah, it was number. It was Josie. Again, back set over to Michael Rathel. Balls in on the end line. Cameron as a young setter coming off the bench, doing a nice job switching up the placement of the ball, keeping the blockers guessing where it's gonna come out of. A well, serve. So I'm gonna put you on the spot here. Oh boy. You've been, uh, you've been around the Grove. Long time. For most of these seniors. I have. You gotta get the inside scoop a little bit on them here. All as right. things kind of wind down. And let's just start at the top with uh, Emma Byro. 
What kind of inside scoop? Well, I'm not sure know, how much inside scoop, but you know, I'm not you know, really in the in the inner circle. You know, maybe a memory from like the middle school. You know. Oh you know, goodness! I don't know if I have one. Of those. Oh come on! There, yes. You know. Well, I can tell you as the band director, Emma there you used go. to play alto saxophone. Alto saxophone. So there's a little inside scoop. She was a heck of a musician. Well, but the young lady's so busy and focused on everything else she she does and. I think they said it earlier, she has a 4.2 grade point average, blazing smart. That's it? Just a 4.2? Just a 4.2, not a big deal. Um, I don't know about you, but I never had a 4.0. I had, you reversed a 4.2, that's probably where I was at. <laughs> if we're, I think in college, if we're I backwards, had, you might have been at a 2.4. Oh, goodness, <laughs> but um, just very intelligent, smart, talented lady in everything she does, you know? Such a role model for these younger students. President of the Student Council. Uh, what does it? What doesn't she do? <laughs> and she handles it all with grace. She is just that quiet, steady, strong, moral, ethical leader. Focused, focused. Great kid. So, what about Carissa? Carissa. I don't have any stories about Carissa. <laughs> well, I do know next semester that Carissa is actually graduating early. So she will graduate in January. She has all her credits in. Another smart as a whip so young gal. So she's got like a 4.8. Uh, I don't know her grade point <laughs> average. Yeah. Um, but her family uh, is part of the real estate business. And she is going to be doing a uh, real estate like internship. Uh, internship second semester. Because that's what she'd like to go to college for. Fantastic. Uh, so when she spends her time there at Dayton, that's what she's interested in. Uh, both uh, dad and mom are involved in that business, and grandma uh, as well. There so. you go. So if you're looking to move anywhere in the Grove, yes. probably Sheboygan County, anywhere down here. That's who you need to call. That's call you need the Capellans. Absolutely. Well, good buddy, Micah. Micah Rathal. Well, a story I got about Micah. Um, I live in Valders. I grew up in Valders. And Micah's grandma has, had been my neighbor for years. Uh, grandma Lynn. Um, and then they ended up moving over to the Fox Valley somewhere, if I've got that right. Um, I'm trying to think of it. I don't know any other Micah stories. Although maybe if I think a little bit, um, I'll come up with something. But um, I do remember her as a little girl going over to Grandma's house, and I'd see her from time to time. <laughs> and now here we are, here we senior are. night. Yep. So uh, did you ever did you ever think, you know, going over to seeing over at Grandma's house, this is where uh, things would end up? No, at that time I did not, you know. And as a teacher, of course, you see a teacher outside of school. Kids aren't always real excited about that, you know. They kind of get big eyes and oh my goodness, oh my goodness, you know. So, uh, but. No, uh, Micah also is a fantastic young lady, very motivated, hardworking. Um, I can't say that enough about all this group of young ladies. Yeah, it's one thing Coach talked about was just how great role models and, and people they are. Yes. Um, not just the seniors, but you, you saw it when, you know, the kids that got up and spoke about them. Absolutely. Even though some of them, a couple of them were sisters, everybody else was just, you know, was emotional and yes, uh, yes. just and checking if the tear ducts worked or not. That's yep. all. They weren't crying. Nobody was crying. Making, Nobody was crying. Just to make sure the tear ducts were still operational. Absolutely. And, you know, sometimes you'll hear coaches or people talk about that, you know, on senior night because it seems to be the thing that you should say. Um, in this case, um, it's very authentic and real. And what was said about those fine young ladies is absolutely true. Um, they've held their mark. So 20 to 10, we're closing in on a third set victory and a, how about this one right here? Coming into the game. Seven. Jocelyn Carmody Jocelyn, there. Jocelyn Carmody and uh, we also have Destiny and Lynn Lizzie. Destiny yeah. and Lizzie, what do we know about those two? Well, Destiny Benton's dad actually helps coach the football team. Okay. He's also heavily involved out at Lakeland College. Um, I believe Destiny's in choir and traveled with us when we went to Florida a while back. Um, I've got Destiny's little sister at, over at the middle school this year. A lot of fun and energy. Um, Lizzie, incidentally, um, goes the homeschool route. And she uh, does that, but obviously participates in our extracurriculars and Perfect. Um, as a part of that. And 
um, has usually served as the managers for most of our female, you know, athletic teams. Yep. Just another high quality, uh, fantastic young lady. Here's a class, a Howard's Grove Classic, Take Me Home Country Road. Thank you. I can see the, uh, the student section already singing and swaying. So that usually means it's the close end is the getting end. close. Uh, sitting on that far bench over there, I hated to hear this song. <laughs> but, Indeed, uh, <laughs> you know it's getting close to the end is near. Yep, but uh, always good. You know, as a former music teacher, I'm watching this, man. We should have hundreds of kids yeah, with right. choirs here at the high school. <laughs> Why are the choir numbers My so low? Goodness. They should be through the roof. Yes. But, well, uh, the choir numbers aren't low. We've low, got a good kids, yeah. but watching this, the whole school should be in the choir. Absolutely. Goodness. They're all singing in tune and can carry along. A little outside set so, there to convince me. Oh, kids. they got the block what? up. Well, that doesn't too hap happen too often. No, not at all. I don't think Chris will look too happy about that either. No, and then uh, I mean, we, we kind of touched on Lizzie a little bit before uh, when she came in there in the second set, but uh, just great student manager overall. Yes. Great kid, loves to be a part of it. And, yes. you know, realistically, as much as we love the, the, the you know, the, the, the big time teams and names and all that stuff, it's, it's kids like Lizzie that, uh, that W7 was kind of started for. Absolutely. Um, you know, those kids that come in and give it their all just as much as the their starters do, and and great teammates, and you better believe it. Well, and the time and energy she puts in to support the program, and she's practicing every day, just like everybody else, putting in all those blood, sweat, and tears, and um, just showing that absolute tremendous support for her teammates through that all. Um, taking care of all the details so that they don't have to worry about those things, so they can just focus on the task at hand and, and really understanding what a true teammate does. Those are the kids that keep the team together and keep the heartbeat going. If, uh, Absolutely. if I can steal a little line from one of our old documentaries, not old documentaries, but recent ones. Wow, incredible dig out there. And uh, oh. Freedom puts it away. <laughs> But big time dig out, and I love the bench energy. Incredible effort there by the Tigers, but a heck of a hit. <laughs> you know, you, 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 it just puts you so out of place, and then you just get it over and freedom one pass ahead, and yeah, Collins at home. It's tough to recover and get up off the ground after that. Absolutely. Scramble. So 22-13. Nice as I look in the crowd tonight as well. I see Maddie Koenig. That's uh, another. Uh, and uh, Maddie Near. Yeah, uh, where are they at? Uh, I believe Maddie Near is down in Milwaukee. Oh, I, I see Maddie Near up there. Yeah, right, right there. Right next I to Maddie Koenig. Yeah, so, I see him right there sitting next to each other. Um, I believe Sam Yancey picked her up on her way through, is my understanding from gotcha. her mom today. Many of uh, many a day spent working on a scouting report and game plan for all three of those names. Absolutely. And, all oh, their friends. Well, and it's nice to hear them talk about coming back for senior night to support folks that were their teammates and supported them through it. They understand what it takes to to achieve that great, you know, that greatness of what they needed. So it's not going to be the senior Carissa. It's going to be the sophomore Cameron looking to serve things out here. And, an ace and there it is, 25-13. So a clean sweep here in the Grove. 25-7, 25-15, 25-13. That will do it. We will be back with the live stream of the players of the match. I will cue you in on who those are gonna be. Gonna be the five seniors. There you go. Those will be a so, fantastic opportunity to talk to those young so ladies. So we'll be right back with five seniors. We'll break the live stream. We'll be right back. You've been watching High School Girls Volleyball on W7. Well, thank you very much, Angie. It's you been bet. a pleasure. Thank you for inviting me this year. I so, enjoyed our time together. We'll be back for basketball. And All right. See what... Uh, See how the weather holds up in the spring with softball. There and, you go. I've, but back next year for volleyball. So coach says we're always invited. 
All right. Well, if so, you get bored for basketball and you need somebody to talk to again, all right. I'm typically around. All righty. Well, if I need any audio cables, I know where to come and when I'm down in the grove. I can always help you with audio cables, <laughs> yep. indeed. So I appreciate it. We'll be right back with the players of the match. It's going to be the two th class of 2022. Howard's Grove, Lady Tiger, seniors.